Officials say a Fort Bragg city councilman who was shot and killed in the woods of Mendocino County had stumbled onto a remote marijuana operation. Deputies say Jerry Mello was shot around 10 o'clock Saturday morning as he and another man walked through a rugged area of timber company land after four miles, about four miles outside of Fort Bragg. The man walking with Mello escaped and called for help on his cell phone. Mello was shot and killed. The co-worker was able to flee the area and call for help. Officials have identified the suspected gunman as Aaron Bassler, whom they describe as a transient who may have been guarding the marijuana garden. He remains at large. And then killing strikes close to home for some North State officials. Marijuana grows similar to the one that Mello stumbled upon are found frequently all over the region. Action News reporter Colin Ligren spoke with a member of the Shasta County Board of Supervisors to see if a similar incident could happen closer to home. Colin? Alan and Kira, unfortunately, there's no right way to stumble upon an illegal marijuana grow. According to the Shasta County Sheriff's Office, many of these sites are run by Mexican drug cartels, and the people can be armed and dangerous. And the marijuana cultivation seems to be a growing problem in Shasta County. I was extremely surprised. That's just putting it mildly. Absolutely. Shasta County Supervisor Les Baugh is talking about a recent helicopter ride he took around the county. The goal was to see how much marijuana Shasta County is actually producing. Are you aware that Shasta County is the third largest producer of marijuana in the entire nation? I'm aware of those statistics. What I was not aware of is that we're producing so much from the backyards of our homes. That was a surprise to me. Ba expected to see marijuana production in rural areas of the county. What surprised him were the grows that were in neighborhoods right next to houses. I saw an average grow that seemed to be 80 to maybe 100 plants easily. Wow. I did count them all in the pictures. I took a lot of pictures. Uh, there were so many uh, marijuana gardens in the backyards of homes that I could not take the pictures fast enough. Law enforcement officials say this site is not rare. They say people are taking advantage of Proposition 215, growing pot under those guidelines and selling it out of state. It doesn't matter why you're growing it, though. If somebody wants to get to it, it's a very valuable cash crop. It's not that uncommon to hear about violence breaking out as a result of a marijuana grow. Boss says he will do whatever he can to keep people safe. But at this point, the problem's too big to handle. There wasn't a shortage of, of marijuana anyway. Really? It's everywhere. Everywhere. One law enforcement official I spoke with today could not go on camera because he's an undercover officer. He said that he sees all sorts of weapons during the marijuana raids and we're very lucky that no one here has suffered the same fate as the councilman in Fort Bragg. Reporting live at the Mount Shasta Mall, I'm Colin Ligren for Action News. Thank you for that report, Colin. A Shasta County man is facing an attempted murder charge for allegedly shooting another man in Montgomery Creek. Sheriff's deputies responded to Windy Point Road about 9.30 last night for a report of a 25-year-old man who had been shot in his chest. Deputies say the victim and the suspect, 46-year-old Terrence Seed, had been arguing over a medical marijuana grow when Seed reportedly pulled out a handgun and shot the man. The victim is still in the hospital. Authorities say his injury is not life threatening threatening. Seed was arrested after being pulled over driving away from the scene. Willows police are searching for the attackers who beat a man over the weekend. 37-year-old Brian Mitchell told police he was walking on the 200 block of West Walnut Street early yesterday morning when he was attacked and knocked to the ground. While on the ground, he was viciously beaten and kicked in the head and body. Mitchell suffered fractures to his head and face. The investigation is ongoing. Anyone with information is urged to call Willows police. Red Bluff police are seeking the public's help in tracking down the two suspects who held up a gas station attendant at gunpoint. It happened around 5:30 Saturday morning at the Valero gas station on Antelope Boulevard. Police have released photos from surveillance video in hopes that someone will recognize the suspects. The clerk told police two men entered the station armed with guns, tied her up, and took cash from the register. Anyone with information is asked to call Red Bluff police. A Reading man is behind bars after nearly a week on the the run. On August 20th, 26-year-old Tyler Schweitzer was involved in a pursuit with Reading Police when an officer tried to stop him for driving a stolen Honda Accord. 
The chase ended with Schweitzer taking off on foot. On Friday, officers received information that Schweitzer was hiding in an apartment on Orange Avenue. He was taken into custody and booked into the Shasta County Jail on multiple charges. Crews were able to contain a fire threatening businesses in Shasta Lake. It started just before 2.30 this afternoon near an AT&T cell tower off of Interstate 5 near Pine Grove Avenue. It consumed four acres and was headed up the hill towards the I-5 off-ramp near Larkin Avenue, getting dangerously close to a number of homes and businesses. Crews were able to contain the fire before it reached any structures. An explosion in the backyard of a Reading duplex that sent residents running for their lives is under investigation. Reading firefighters responded to the call just before 3 yesterday afternoon on LeBrun Lane off Lawrence Road in southeast Reading. The two families living in the duplex were home but were not hurt. The home was engulfed in flames when crews arrived. They were able to put out the flames before they spread to any other structures. Damage is estimated at $300,000. In other news now, the California Assembly has unanimously approved a bill to slow down the governor's ability to grant clemency to convicted criminals. The bill approved today to a, a, a response of a controversial decision by former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, who reduced the sentence of a political ally's son just hours before he left office. The Senate unanimously approved it last week. If signed by Governor Brown, the law would require that the governor give at least 10 days notice to the district attorney before acting on an application for clemency. The district attorney would then have to make reasonable efforts to notify the victim or victims of the crime who would have time to petition against a sentence reduction. A federal judge heard arguments today on whether he should unseal video recordings of last year's landmark trial on the constitutionality of Proposition 8, California's voter-approved ban on gay marriage. Lawyers representing two same-sex couples, the city of San Francisco, and a coalition of media groups asked Chief U.S. District Judge James Ware to make those recordings public. After the end of today's hearing, the judge said he needed time to review the arguments and would issue a written ruling at a later date. The judge said he was torn between needing to preserve public access to court proceedings and upholding the integrity of the courts. The ruling from last August overturning Proposition 8 as an unconstitutional violation of the civil rights of gay Californians is currently on appeal. Well, there's more to come on NBC 24 Action News at 530.